All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about everything we do to winterize. It's not really winterizing, it's more like summarizing the goose trailer because we hunt all winter, right? But I'm gonna talk about everything we do to get our decoys ready and get, you know, just the little things that we do, I think that helps makes us a little bit more successful throughout our goose hunting season. Um, I just did a video on the entire trailer setup, how we built it and why we built it the way we did. So if you wanna check that out, make sure you do it. I'll drop a link in the description below and in the cards right up here. Number one, you have to clean it out. So we empty the whole thing. As you'll see behind me, there's decoys everywhere. My whole backyard is full of decoys right now. I have layouts in the front yard and snow covers in the laundry. And me and Jake do this every year. It's a mess. It takes literally an entire day, um, but it's good to just get it out of the way. When we empty the trailer, we sweep all the hay out of it. As you can tell, there's freaking barley stubble all over the ground by my feet. There was, I, I'm not kidding you, that entire trash bin is completely full of barley stubble. So there was just crap everywhere in this trailer. So step one, you know, we just empty it out, clean it up, and then uh, just kind of start going through and making sure, hey, you know, what's broken? What do we need to replace? If, you know, you went and checked out that trailer video on how we had this thing organized, you're gonna be familiar with this cabinet system, my generator charging system that we have up here. But <clears throat> you make sure you pull the batteries out of all of your robo decoys. So if you have mojos, pop those batteries out. I like to fully charge them before storing them and then put them on a, uh, something wood so they're not sitting on concrete or something metal. I have these Mojo Mini Flags. We take all the AA batteries out of there uh, and just you know clean the terminals with a wire brush to make sure that they're stored dry and they're not gonna corrode and the batteries are gonna parasitically drain. So we've pulled all the batteries out of everything. Everything is clean. We made sure that all the motion stand decoys that we use in our hunts, these things right here are incredible. I had to fix the wiring harness on this one. So again, just testing all your stuff, making sure that it's working, that it's clean and that it's ready to go. That way, when opening day rolls around next year and you're coming off elk hunting and you don't have time to get anything ready, all you gotta do is hook up to this trailer and you know when you show up to your field, everything is gonna be ready to go. The stands tend to be pretty good. The stakes tend to be pretty good. Flags, we're always having to repair and replace. We've been testing different types of flags throughout the years and there's really no good flag, I'm not gonna lie to you. But as far as flags that have been the most durable for us, that uh, Avery Power flag, here's actually one right here. I think for the first time in maybe history, these two flags both lasted us the entire season. So just Avery Power flag, these these two did really good for us this year. We've had good luck with uh, actually the really cheap uh, herders flags from Cabela's. What happens there is they'll just end up ripping on the material, but at least the poles and the, the pipes don't snap. First, we empty the layouts out and pounds and pounds of crap come out of these things. I mean, we found a battery pack this year. We have found cases of shells just laying. So much stuff ends up down in the bags of these things, it's amazing. So first of all, we empty them out and then we start to just lay them out so they can dry out. Once they're dried out, then we'll fold them back up and put them back in the trailer. Uh, another thing that we do is we wash our snow covers every year. They get full of blood mostly, but also mud. Um, and just to keep those things white is key. So like I said, the, the snow covers for the layouts are actually down in the washing machine right now. Another thing is the UV spray. We always make sure that we wash those with the UV stuff. So it's UV washing everything out of there so the birds don't see them. When we get a brand new layout, first thing we do is we always mud them. We just literally make a mud hole in my backyard and smear mud all over them to, to get that sheen off of the natural material. Then we'll take spray paint and we'll hit all of the metal parts with spray paint, just matte, any type of matte, whether it's green, brown, black. You can see all of these bars that were once chrome, aluminum, metal are now covered with paint. So really key, uh, bottom first, paint all the metal stuff with a, matte, with a matte paint, and then you get into the fast grass. And that's what all this crap is. So you just start taking zip ties to all the different uh, loops and molly webbing, and you're just, taking fast grass on there. And then once you get to the field, you're taking your natural stubble and adding that to the fast grass. And that's kind of how we hide. Um, if you've watched all the hunting videos, which I'm sure you have, uh, I really like the layout system we have. We have two really big, comfortable layouts. Uh, those are the Tangle Freeze right here on my left-hand side. And then we have two smaller Mobile Elite Cabela's layouts. And what that lets us do is put the two bigger ones up in the middle. Delta will typically hide between those two with us, uh, behind, underneath her goose shell, actually. And then the two little ones go on the outside, so it creates a taper. So a really good height. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what we do for the layouts. Just make sure the snow covers are washed. The, you know, they're all ready to go for the following season. And more than anything, dried out. The last thing you want to do is store these things with any bit of... Like you can see, this, this was really wet before, and now it's finally dry. So what we'll do is we'll flip this inside out now, and we'll let all the grass actually dry out. So there you go. 
Now that thing is, is drying out inside and out before we're ready to again fold them up and stick them back in the trailer. So clean the trailer, clean everything that goes in the trailer, and then load the trailer back up. Let's move on to the decoys because that's, that's a lot of work. I have a lot of really good flock decoys that I keep in slotted bags, uh, which are all kind of right here. And those I stack in first before I put the rest of the full bodies in. Again, some sleeper shells, just a random eclectic mix of decoys. And as we empty this, we always kind of check for three things. One, how does the paint look on them? Do they need a quick dusting of matte black to kind of touch up, touch up the paint? Two, are all the heads and bases screwed on? That's really important as you're carrying decoys around. It's really annoying to have, you know, be holding the head and the body pops off. So we screw the head and the feet on all of them. We make sure the paint is all fresh and uh, touched up. And then the other thing is I always like to make sure that my initials are on the bottom there. And that just comes in handy for when you're dumping multiple trailers or hunting with other people. You always make sure you get your decoys back. Obviously, they're really expensive and you don't want to be losing them. Um, coming to the backyard here, you'll see the, kind of the, the shit show that is getting this trailer ready for the season. Um, here is all the decoys that needed work done this year. Um, those lessers needed some fresh paint, so we went ahead and did that. These avians needed the heads screwed on. All these big decoys needed some, some head work. And another thing that we added this year are the tail loops. I think those things are going to come in really handy. We used to have tail loops on some of my flock decoys, and I actually cut those tail loops off because the flocking gets ruined really fast when you have decoys rubbing against each other, which is the reason they're in slotted bags right now. Uh, these bigger, you know, uh, Bigfoots, I've got some lessers, I've got some full-sized uh, Bigfoots, but all those are really durable. You don't really have to worry about them rubbing, rubbing together. So we added tail loops. And as you'll see in this little video, I'm gonna cut in here. Jake was able to carry, how many of those did you think? 11. He carried 11 at one time. So it's a really fast way for you to be able to take the trailer empty it out and carry decoys a really long way. Let's say you have to make a decoy change because the wind switched on you. You just start grabbing tail loops and carrying 11 decoys at a time and it goes a lot faster. And timing is everything uh, in the goose hunting world. You know, a decoy change that takes you 10 minutes could, you know, cost you two or three groups if you were able to do it in five. So that's the goal. It's all a speed and efficiency thing. The tail loops are super simple. All we did was drill a hole in the back here, cut a piece of paracord, run the paracord through tie a knot, burn the end with a blowtorch, and you're done. I don't want to get into too much detail on, on painting decoys, but I do have people ask me a lot, you know, how do you how do you freshen up your decoys? How do you paint them? I have painted decoys completely from scratch before, and that's different. That entails two or three different colors, typically a tan, a white, and a black. Um, I'm gonna show you how just to freshen them up. All you need is a can of black. So before I get into how to paint decoys, one thing that's really important is matte paint, I said that already, or flat paint actually, ideally completely flat, no semi-gloss, nothing like that. Let this paint can sit in the sun and let it warm up before you paint. Also, let your decoys sit in the sun and let them warm up. I cannot tell you how important that is. When your decoys get nice and warm to the touch, and your paint is nice and warm to the touch, they adhere so much better. If you try to do this on a cold day, if the paint's cold and the plastic's cold, it's not going to hold, it's going to flake, it's going to look like crap. So let the decoys warm up, let the paint warm up. Another important thing uh, before you get to painting is to make sure that these things are clean. You don't want to be painting over any dirt. A lot of times when we pull the decoys out, that's one thing we have to do every year is clean them off just to make sure there's not dirt all over them. These are actually looking pretty good this year. We had a lot of snow hunts, which we were very fortunate of <laughs> because when it snows around here, we kill the crap out of the geese. But also, it didn't get the decoys all muddy, so we don't really have to clean them this year, which is nice. Uh, so I'll grab just one of these right here. These are actually in pretty good shape, but just to kind of show you what we do, um, these are flock heads and they're in good shape, so I'm not going to paint them, but typically you just really heavy hit the head in black, um, and then you hit the tail really hard in black. This one, I don't mind painting back over. So you hit the tail in black there like that. Uh, the, the tail is always really black. And sometimes actually, if you look at the back of a feathers on, on geese, the back, the back main feathers will even be black. So I don't even mind giving them a little bit of a, a point like that. Okay, so that's kind of the main structural points. And then to freshen up the body itself, this one's getting a little bit yellow. You'll notice the wind was kind of blowing in that direction. So one easy thing to do is just make sure that your paint is blowing into the decoy. And you never want to blow the, the paint on it directly like that. You always want to just dust it. So you want to have the paint can really far away from the decoy. And I'm going to set this one down just so it's not moving and Jake can follow it. But what you're going to do is just get over here where your, your paint is dusting on it like that. And you just, you're going to want to have a little bit of movement. So you can barely tell from the camera, but right now I've already darkened that up quite a bit. 
and you'll see like right here on, I haven't done this edge so this edge is missing all this white on the edge of the feathers which is good it gives it some texture but it's not good when it gets to be too white so I'm gonna slide over here and you're gonna see how it kind of changes a little bit but as I as I hit this just that dust is just kind of barely hitting it that's all you need to do that little bit a lip a little bit of movement in the can is key and then just little touches I'm never just I'm never holding it and just hammering it so now this so now this decoy is pretty much done and I'm going to show you the difference between the one I just did and the one it was next to which looked exactly the same so subtle but this one was starting to get yellow over here and this one over there that I just did is a lot darker which it's more natural on how how it looks so that's kind of what we do to freshen up the paint on these things as far as screwing stuff on I mentioned that what you're gonna to want to do is get some drywall screws uh, and then with those drywall screws you just go ahead and you basically screw the head into the main body of the decoy and then underneath you take the stand and you do the same thing so you're just sinking this so whether you're grabbing it by the, the base like this to carry it out whether you're grabbing it by the head like this to carry it out the decoy's not popping off and falling off on you so but now with our new tail loops we won't even have to worry about that another thing we like to do is we like to paint all of our tools in snow snow camo right so we bought three brooms two shovels that we keep painted matte white and what that does the only time you're really going to use these brooms is for brushing snow off decoys and the only time you're going to use these shovels is for tapering off the snow covers on your layouts so naturally since you're only using them in the snow they should be white so it's really easy for us to just keep these in the trailer whenever it snows we have the snow tools there and then to hide them you don't have to put them in the layouts with you you literally just lay them next to the the layout on the ground and they disappear into the snow so we touch those back up with white every year so that pretty much covers everything i have to say around you know getting your stuff ready and prepped for season thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed what you saw make sure you drop a comment down in the box below and click that subscribe button thank you guys so much for watching we'll catch you next time